Hello there, boys and girls. Welcome to tonight's vodcast. Tonight's vodcast is going to be on the structures and the functions of the parts of the circulatory system, otherwise known as the cardiovascular system. So the three main structures that we're going to talk about include the heart, the blood vessels, and the blood. So first of all, we're going to start off with the heart. So as we see here on the screen, we have a picture of the human heart. The function of the heart is to pump blood and oxygen and nutrients to the body. And this is very important because our cells need these things in order to make energy, to keep carrying out the cell processes that we need to survive. So as we take a look inside of the heart, we can see the different structures of the heart. Here's a cross section of the heart. So this means that we're taking a look at the insides of the heart. It's been cut in half. We have two chambers at the top and we have two chambers at the bottom. The chambers are compartments or areas where blood will flow into as the heart contracts. The two top chambers are called the atria. We have the right atrium and the left atrium. And then below them, we have the two ventricles. The ventricles are the bottom compartments that kind of have that V shape to them. And again, we have the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Now the difference between the two is that the atria, they're located on the top of the heart. So since they're located on the top of the heart, they receive the blood from the body and from the lungs. So the right atrium receives blood from the body and the left atrium receives blood from the lungs. And when the atrium contract, they'll force the blood down into the ventricles. So the right atrium pumps the blood into the right ventricle and then the left atrium pumps the blood into the left ventricle. The ventricles, the bottom compartments, are the parts of the heart that send the blood outside of the heart. So the right ventricle is going to send blood outside of the heart to the lungs, and then the left ventricle is going to send blood outside of the heart to the rest of the body. Now between the ventricles and the atrium, we have structures called valves. And these valves ensure that the blood flows in one direction, from atrium to ventricle. We don't have any backflow of the blood inside of the heart. It continuously moves in one direction. And then in the middle of the heart, we have this thick muscular wall here called the septum. And the septum is important because it keeps the oxygen-poor blood that comes back from the body on the right side of the heart from mixing with the oxygen-rich blood that's come from the lungs on the left side of the heart. So we want to prevent this mixture because we want to send the oxygen-rich blood out to the body so our cells can use it. So we want to keep the oxygen-poor blood that's already been used from being sent back out to the body. So let's take a quick look at how the heart functions as it pumps the blood through the heart itself. So as you can see, we have deoxygenated blood, colored in blue for oxygen poor, pouring into the right atrium. And then we have oxygen rich blood, signified by red, pouring into the left atrium. As the atria contract, they pump and push the blood down into the ventricles. So the oxygen poor is in the right ventricle and the oxygen rich is in the left. And then as these ventricles contract, they'll send the blood through the valves, going into two different areas. The blood that's leaving through the pulmonary artery is going to the lungs to pick up oxygen, and the blood that's leaving through the aorta already has oxygen, so it's now going out to the rest of the body to deliver to the cells. So that's the pathway of the blood through the heart as the heart contracts with each beat. Now once the heart contracts and sends the blood outside of the heart to the body, the blood has to be carried through something. Our body is in an open circulatory system where blood just sloshes around and touches all the cells inside of our body. We have a network of tubing called blood vessels, and there's three types of blood vessels that we're going to learn about in this vodcast. First of all, we have the artery here on the left. Now, the artery is the thickest vessel out of the three because it has to withstand a lot of the pressure. And the reason why it has to withstand a lot of pressure because this is the vessel that carries blood away from the heart. So as the heart squeezes and forces the blood out, it's coming at an extremely high pressure so the thick walls of the artery don't rupture and burst and keep the blood inside the tubes. Now, the second vessel we have here are called the veins. The veins are the second thickest, but they're not as thick as the arteries because they don't carry blood away from the heart. Veins carry blood back to the heart. So they're not dealing with as much pressure as the arteries are. Now inside the veins, we have these structures called valves. And the valves serve a very important function for us. Now as you can see, here we have two skeletal muscles on each side of the vein. And then these U-shaped things, or these curled things in the middle of the vessels, these are your valves. These valves inside of your veins prevent blood from backflowing down to the bottom of your body. So if you've ever been sitting around, you'll sometimes you might have wondered why the blood doesn't pool at your feet. 
it's because these valves prevent that from happening. Okay, so here we have the veins and we have two skeletal muscles next to the veins. And the skeletal muscles act as another pump. The skeletal muscles will actually force the blood through the veins back towards the heart. So here we have the contraction of the muscles forcing the blood through the valves. Now as the muscles relax, they're going to stop squeezing the vein. And when they stop squeezing the vein, there won't be any force to force the blood up anymore. So the blood's going to want to backflow. And as a result, as this blood backflows, it closes the valves and then the valves keep the blood from going back down. So as, we, as you continue to move and walk, contracting your skeletal muscles, they're going to squeeze, force the blood up, and as your muscles relax, the blood drifts back down, shutting the valves and staying there. And so those are the veins. And then lastly, we have our third vessel, and these vessels are called the capillaries. Now the capillaries are the thinnest vessels, and they are so thin that, as you can see, they don't have these multi-layers to them as the vein and the arteries do. Capillary is only one cell thick. So that means each wall is only made up of one cell. Obviously, a bunch of cells connected to get together to make this tube, which is only one cell thick. Now, capillaries do connect the veins and the arteries together. So as blood flows through the arteries, they'll eventually get to the capillaries. And as the blood travels through the capillaries, they'll then come back out through the veins and on the way back to the heart. Now the capillaries are important because they are one cell thick which allows them to diffuse oxygen and nutrients into the cell and take carbon dioxide and other waste out of the cell and back into the blood. So let's take a look at what capillary blood flow looks like in a goldfish tail. As you take a look at this video here you can see the capillaries in this goldfish tail and the little round things moving through the goldfish tail are the blood cells. So this gives you an idea of how tiny capillaries are because if you take a close look at this you'll notice that the cells are essentially going one cell at a time. They're moving single file through the capillary. So as they travel through they're dropping off oxygen and picking up carbon dioxide and other wastes. And those are our three major blood vessels. Lastly, the third part of the cardiovascular system includes the blood. Now the blood has four parts to it. We have the red blood cells, we have white blood cells, we have platelets, and we have blood plasma. Now as you take a look at this picture here, these are the red blood cells. They're easy to identify because they are the round red cells. Now red blood cells are important because their function is to carry oxygen to the cells. So whenever you take a breath and you bring oxygen into your lungs, the oxygen gets attached to these red blood cells which then get pumped out of the heart to the body and then these cells drop off the oxygen to the cells that need oxygen. Secondly, these white cells are called white blood cells and we've seen them before and we know that the white blood cells are the cells that fight infections for us. So these cells are the cells that are going to destroy viruses and bacteria and other foreign invaders or other foreign particles inside of our body to keep us healthy. Now these weird shaped cells that are not exactly as round as the other ones, these are called cell fragments and these cell fragments are specifically called platelets. The function of platelets is to help us with blood clotting when we get a cut in our skin to prevent blood from continuously leaving the body. And the fourth part of the blood is called the blood plasma. Now the blood plasma is the liquid part of the blood and it makes up over half of what the blood is. So that's why blood is a liquid because it's made up of plasma. Now the blood plasma is important because the nutrients and the minerals that your cells need, they're dissolved in the plasma and also the red blood cells and the white blood cells and the platelets flow in the plasma so that's how it gets throughout the body. So those are the four parts of the blood boys and girls. And that concludes this vodcast. Thank you.